story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello there and welcome to Call TV News on the hour with me, Sabena Izuku. Ahead of the 2015 general elections, the National Tax Force on Illegal Importation of Small Arms and Light Weapons has raised the alarm over the increasing number of illegal borders currently being used to smuggle dangerous weapons into the country, which it said had hit 6,000. The organization said it was willing to partner security operators in the country in protecting the borders across the country. The Director General of the NAP Force and former presidential candidate of the African Liberation Party in 2011 elections, Emmanuel Osita Okiri, expressed this concern during an interview with journalists in Abuja. While commenting on the current security challenges in the Northeast, he urged President Goodluck Jonathan to check the allegiance of his service chiefs and advisor following the attacks in the Northeast. He alleged that security chiefs and those advising Jonathan on security matters may have been sabotaging his efforts to wipe out terrorism in the area. President Goodluck Jonathan on Saturday said the federal government was determined to liberate all terrorists occupied by Boko Haram insurgents in the Northeast. Jonathan gave the assurance at the launch of the presidential initiative for the Northeast in Midugri. Represented by the Minister of State for Power, Mohammed Wakil, Jonathan said the government was in process of deploying more troops and resources to ensure quick liberation of the occupied territories. He said government would unveil a Marshall Plan for the rehabilitation and reconstruction and redevelopment of the area soon after the insurgents had been dislodged. The president added that government had introduced numerous interventions programs to alleviate the sufferings of the people affected by the insurgency. He named some of them to include the presidential initiative for the Northeast ahead of the National Security Advisor, Sambo Dasuki, and the presidential committee on distribution of relief materials headed by NEMA Director General Malansani Seed, among others. The strange phenomenon is increasingly attracting attention worldwide. In Nigeria, the case is not different except that the attention is attracted, is less driven by government, thus leaving the major part to unscrupulous bodies in the name of non-governmental organization with selfish interest. Correspondent by Samuel recently went in search of street kids in Nassau State and returned with this disturbing tale, the report. These children are in Lafia, all the way from some communities in Katsina State. They have traveled thousands of kilometers, supposedly in search of knowledge. But they are on the streets, hanging around restaurants to pick the leftovers of customers' meals. Looking so sick, this nine-year-old boy says he has not eaten for hours. He says his parents brought him from Katsina, but he hasn't seen them in the last four months. The only thing he knows is the Quranic education, and that is why his parents brought him to Lafia. I have spent four months in elementary school. My parents brought me here to study. I was not brought here to study Western education. We get food sometime when we go out, and we reserve some with our teachers. In spite of fending for themselves, they are still clearly kids. With toy guns in their hands, they play cops and robbers. But on Thursdays and Fridays, these boys leave the local Almajuri school to go in search for food and money. Most times, they get little or nothing to fall back on. When we go out, we get money. We kept some and used some. If anyone is sick among us, we use the money to get drugs. We don't go out every day. We go to 
our teacher's farm and help him to work. We don't attend the school built by the government because we were brought here to attend the local Almajiri school. The locals here are not happy with the Almajiri situation. They say Boko Haram elements could easily take advantage of the boys. The issue of Almajiri, when we are talking about Almajiri in Islam, Islam does not encourage Almajiri at all. Islam has, Almajiri has no place in Islam. Islam encourages every person to wake up, work hard, earn your living. You don't, it is not ideal for you to get, get back to children and you scatter them in the street with the name of begging. You know, Islam does not encourage that. We are not encouraging the Almajiri group. This is, a, this, is, this is the sources of Boko Haram initiate. We are not welcoming Almajiri. It's not an Islamic culture. It's not an Islamic foundation. Anybody promoting Almajiri sector is not an Islamic sector. Oh, Almajiri, it is something of Almajiri. You know, leaving those children walking about is not in the best interest of Islamic. Because moving around will cause so many problems. You know, people have started to use them. That is what is causing the problem. You know, they are one of the key suspects in this uh, Boko Haram something. People say they are using Almajiri and they are condemning Almajiri. Why? Because people use them. Only recently, the federal government established a school for Almajiris in several states, including Nasarawa. This is the school, but it is now home to internally displaced persons from Taraba State. So, for now, these children will continue to be on the streets until something is done by the relevant authorities. These children have to go out every day in search of their daily bread. For this nine-year-old, he has not eaten anything since morning. As you can see, his plate is totally empty. And for him, the future doesn't really hold much. Pius Samuel, Court TV News, Lafia. The Sultan of Sokoto, Saad Abubakar, and Catholic Archbishop of Sokoto Diocese, Mathi Hassan Kuka, have stated that Nigeria would not disintegrate because of crises which are being anticipated during the 2015 general elections. According to them, Nigeria would remain united no matter the drum of war been beaten by some persons who do not wish the country well. They, however, called the Nigerians across the ethnic and religious diversity to work towards sustainable dialogue, reconciliation and peace. The Sultan, represented by the Anduma of Duma of Nasawa State, Amadu Aliyugu Oga Onawo and Kuka, stated this during a roundtable on rekindling the spirits and culture of volunteerism in Nigeria and public presentation of a book entitled Peace and Reconciliation, a Nigerian conversation jointly organized by Kuka Center and the Department of Mission and Dialogue, Catholic Secretariat of Nigeria. The monarch said, the ordinary man in Nigeria loves this country. The ordinary man in Nigeria believes in the indivisibility of this country. The ordinary man in Nigeria believes that Nigeria must remain one and united always. The National Chairman of Nigeria's Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, Atahiru Jago, has confirmed the arrest of two INEC and ad hoc staff for carrying out a house to house registration of voters in Kano State. Court TV News gathered that arrest was carried out with involvement of operators of the Department of State Service, DSS, and the police in Kano State. The arrested Electric Commissioner for Kano State also confirmed the arrest affected by the pooling units in Kabul area of the state. The two arrested individuals have, however, been granted bail. The Director General of the DSS, Ekwen Yongita, was said to have alerted Jagal, who confirmed the arrest and assured that the replacement of the two staff involved was already on. Jagal insisted that offenders will be prosecuted. The Accord Party is demanding a rerun of the August 9, 2014 governorship election that returned uh, Rafariq Bashola as the governor of Oshu State. 
According to the party and its governorship candidate at the election, Niyu Owulade, the pool was fraught with irregularities in all 30 local government areas in the state, hence the call for a rerun. The petitioners presented photocopies of certificates, three copies of forms, uh, ECB 8 series as exhibits, exhibits before the tribunal over the weekend. Councils to Governor Rafare Mashola and the APC picked holes in the, in the documents presented by the court party but allowed the tribunal to accept them as exhibits My in order to fast track the hearing. We're challenging the elections in all the 30 local governments. Well, ours is different, ours is unique. Because I was going through, I saw the PDP's uh, uh, petition last week and I realized that they were challenging 17 or something like that. Ours is the 30. Uh, and our own prayer, main prayer, is that there should be a rerun. What they have brought today is a photocopy of a certified copy. In the case of uh, Yola Omishore and Aregbe Shola, which came up yesterday, they tendered the certified copy that had the original stamp of INEC. That is what the, the, the case of Oulade has now reproduced as a copy, which they are now tendering today. And we have noticed some manipulations. So upon which we are saying that this cannot be the certified copy of the original. I can tell you without fear or contradiction that the Supreme Court has held in countless cases that the photocopy of a certified true copy is a photocopy of an authentic document. That objection, respectfully, does not have any merit. Thank you. Your name, sir. A core party against the victory of Arek Bishala has been heard alongside that of the PDP and its governorship candidate, Yola Omishuri. We'll take a short break and when we return, there will be more stories for you. Do stay with us. There is an Ebola virus epidemic in some West African countries. The Nigerian government wants you to be aware and watch out against the spread of Ebola in your community. Help keep our country safe and watch out for severe cases of fever, headaches, diarrhea, chest and abdominal pain, sore throat, cough, red eyes, and bleeding from the eyes, ears, and nose. Especially when these symptoms are found in persons coming into Nigeria from other West African countries. Protect yourself. Wash your hands regularly with soap and running water or use a hand sanitizer. Avoid contact with the blood, urine, feces, or saliva of animals like bats, monkeys, gorillas, chimpanzees, or infected persons. The Ebola virus is deadly. Don't catch it. Don't spread it. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information. Welcome back. For more news and updates, you can join us on the social media platform on Facebook.com called TV News. Better still on Twitter, Twitter.com forward slash Court TV News NJ. On our YouTube, YouTube.com forward slash Court TV, Liver Space and then News. The Federal High Court in Oshobo, the Oshun State Capital, hearing the case instituted by, against the management of the Obafemi Awolowo University has directed the school to settle out of court with rusticated students. The students had challenged what the termed illegal rustication by the school in court. Meanwhile, counsel to the university had before the order told the court that school did not rusticate the students. Rashid Rashid encounters the counsels on the directive and filed on this report. Great effect, great. I love you. There's only one great effect in the universe. That's the mood at the Federal High Court sitting in Oshobo when the case involving the management of the Obafemi Awolowo University and the students came up for hearing during the week. Olajuwa and other eight students had dragged the school authority before the court for illegal rustication over their participation in a protest. Justice Babs Kue Wumi directed the matter to be settled out of court. The police also denied ever investigating the students while the school authorities denied rusticating Juan and the eight others in the first place. There was no time they investigated Sanyaolu or Lajuan. The counsel to the university authority in Viva Voke said there was no time the applicant that Sanyaolu or Lajuan was sent away from school. The court, as a parent, advised that the matter be resolved among parties. The case of the student uh, is being looked into, and uh, 
The position of the court and of the council is that uh, we should resolve this matter out of court. In making sure all parties see to the settlement within reasonable period of time, the court ordered that the settlement report be brought to its notice as the school speaks on its demand from the affected students. We directed that we should come back on the 4th of December 2014 to report settlement, possibly to withdraw the processes and have the case struck out or to report to the court the situation of whatever discourse we have engaged in. We are hoping that uh, the two parties cooperating together, this matter should be resolved out of court. And we are coming back to report the out of court settlement at the next adjourned date. So we are asking for an undertaking for good behavior. It's as simple as that. One of the affected students, San Yaolu, speaks on his expectation from the school authorities. As long as I'm back on campus, and uh, the management does not continue in its act of, you know, rechanting student activists no more. So there's no issue with that. Many are already looking out to the out-of-court settlement to bring in the desired relief. Rashid Rashid, for TV News, Oshubu. Recent revelation by Nigerians oil sector managers that about 80% of the nation's oil pipeline had been vandalized as worrying even to the average Nigerian. The development has resulted in rise in the case of oil theft and illegal bunkering in the country, especially in the Niger Delta, Nigerians oil production base. The oil theft has continued unabated despite efforts by the federal government to curb the activities of all pipeline vandals and the cohorts. Omotaya Alo in the special report takes a look at the implosion of criminal activities and the attendance effect on the Niger economy as well as the overall development of the country. Her report. We need to diversify our economy. We, we, one of the key issues is that we cannot continue to be, and we keep on saying all the time, a monoproduct uh, economy. There's need for us to look at other sources of, of, of revenue. Uh, be that as it may, I believe that also we need to have the, the, the political will to confront head on some of these um, abuses and, 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 and some of this sabotage and some of this stuff that is going on. These security alerts by the Chairman Senate Committee on the Environment and Ecology, Bukola Saraki, leaves much to be desired, especially as it concerns the far-reaching damaging effects of oil theft, an illicit trade that involves the theft of crude oil and its derivative product through a variety of different mechanisms with significant economic, social, environmental, governance and security implications and contributed immensely to the poverty was recently confronted by the Nigerian Navy at the Majidun waterways in the Ikorodu area of Lagos. The community is enmeshed in extreme poverty, depicting the poor standard of living of its people. But there appears more to this as the look of the environment tends to shield the activities of the perpetrators from the preying eyes of security agents. For this retired Nigerian colonel, the theft of oil would continue unabated if the poor are being relegated to the background. He added that Nigeria will continue to be economically vulnerable until it pays more attention to other resources outside oil. So long as there are no other sources and the officially gathered fund from the oil cannot be properly shared, there will be stealing of oil. We cannot deceive ourselves. People will beat it. People will die on it. People will smuggle so long as it, we are depending on that mono product as a means of our sustenance. But if we diversify, then there will be less pressure on the oil and still step will reduce. Illegal practitioner Malaki Ugomadu says corruption in high places has amplified against oil thieves. It is not their responsibility to get a few scapegoats just so that you give the signal to uh, people who may be tempted to go into that uh, by effectively prosecuting those who are culpable and those who have been arrested for oil theft. Recently, after successfully intercepting over 2,050 litre containers containing oil products on the Majidun waterways and its surrounding creeks, 
the flag officer commanding of the Nigerian Navy Western Naval Command, Somi Aladi, says oil thieves cannot be identified except they are caught and made to reveal their accomplice. We need more resources so that we can procure more uh, seagoing platforms, then we can procure more weapons, then we can also procure all other, you know, um, uh, items, you know, relating to our operations, you know, at sea. Before the interception of the Navy, Core TV News got up. The thousand of tons of oil are spirited away daily in the last 10 years without anyone baiting an eyelid. Apart from the activities sabotaging the economy and putting public finance in jeopardy, the aquatic life of the community has been destroyed while security of residents in the areas hosting the illegal businesses is on that serious threat. However, some Nigerians believe there can't be a smoke without fire and called on government to take a step further by probing oil industry experts who are involved in the dirty business. The worry for them is the vandals could not have developed the expertise to vandalism of oil pipelines without internal connivance. Or Motayualo, Core TV News, Lagos. As we all know, the ongoing G20 summit in Australia is generating a lot of uh, crisis um, over Russia and its role in Ukraine. There's more on this after the break. Stay with us. From time immemorial, women have birthed life, shaped character, and by extension, influenced the society. Morimi of Ife, a Moten of Benin, Queen Aminat of Zaria, all women of influence and power. Whether it's before election, after election. How ironical. Women being so powerful, yet have few grounds in decision making. They see you as weak, and I see you as a wife to a man. We are talking women in politics. A woman will be bold enough to stand up and say, I want to become president of Nigeria. Only on Core TV News. Welcome back to the news. Various Western leaders have rebuked Russia over its role in the Ukraine crisis at the ongoing G20 summit in Australia. Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper told Russian President Vladimir Putin that he needed to get out of Ukraine. President Barack Obama said Moscow's aggression in Ukraine was a threat to the world, while the UK threatened more sanctions unless Russia stopped destabilizing its neighbor. The two-day summit in Brisbane is focusing on promoting economic growth. The world leaders expected to elaborate on plans agreed by G20 finance ministers in February to boost global growth by two uh, injured in five years. However, Saturday, the first of the two-day summit, was dominated by Ukraine, where pro-Russian separatists have been fighting government forces in eastern region. Ukraine and its western allies have accused Russia of sending military forces across the border, something Kremlin denies. The EU imposed sanctions when Russia annexed Crimea in March and has added further measures since. If President Vladimir Putin expected a warm diplomatic welcome at the G20 under blazing Brisbane sun, he was disappointed. He was in fact subjected to something more akin to a severe Siberian winter. The West believes Russia is behind the escalation of tension in eastern Ukraine, a conflict that has already cost 4,000 lives. And that's it on the news on the R2 Jomi at the top of the hour for more. I am Sabana Izoki, and thank you very much indeed for watching.